Good morning. All right, come on, people. Good morning. That's better. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord today? Let's try that one again. Come on, people, wake up. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Thank you. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you for coming and visiting with us at Southside. If you are a guest today, we're glad that you're here. Uh, thank you for choosing to worship with us today. I know that the Lord's going to bless you, and it's going to be a good day here today in the house of the Lord. Uh, those of you who are watching online, thank you for tuning in this morning. I uh, just want to welcome you and just thank you for tuning in with us. And uh, we do have a few announcements that we need to make today. First thing I want to say is y'all notice this ugly shirt I have on today. I had absolutely nothing to do with the designing of these shirts, but these shirts are for Impact Weekend for our youth this weekend that, that is going on. And today when church is over at 1230, our youth will get on the, uh, the church bus out here. We'll be driving over to Spartanburg to the Upward Star Center in Spartanburg to have the, uh, the Impact Weekend for the youth. So make sure that you're in prayer for that. And that's why you see some of the students, some of them wore their shirts today and some of them did not. But that's why you see these shirts today. So just pray for us as we go over there. Pray that the Lord will work through this Impact Weekend and that we'll be able to reach our youth in a way that they need to be reached. I think everyone would agree with everything that's going on in the world today and all the places that people turn, that this is, we need to be turning to the Lord more now than we ever have before. But we do have another, a few other announcements that we need to make. Our Annie Armstrong Easter offering. We have gotten closer on that, but we are still $1,014 short of that goal. So if you have not given to that, or if you have given and you feel like the Lord's leading you to give more to that, feel free to give to that. Also, the children's paint day that was scheduled for this Saturday has been canceled. Uh, Andrew Ellis has tested positive for uh, COVID, so they are being quarantined for two weeks, so they had to postpone that. But Miss Beth wanted me to announce that she will reschedule that sometime in May. She'll have to get with the lady, and they'll get another date for that. But she said, instead of eggs, we will be painting something that will be a summer theme. So she'll make that adjustment. So y'all make sure you pray for Andrew and make sure that he's doing okay right now. She said he's been uh, suffering with some headaches, but she said they've gotten better. So y'all continue to pray for Andrew. And also, Miss Catherine wanted me to make sure. So y'all make sure you listen very closely. Choir practice this Wednesday night. So make sure that you are there. Very important choir practice, so make sure that you show up for that. And also, we do have two other announcements that we need to make. And it's in the sign-up part here. Also, like I've said, you can always sign up in the bulletin here. We have a tear-out sheet. You can just sign up and put it in the offering plate on your way out. But if you will be graduating from high school or college, make sure you get that information into the church because we need to make sure that we recognize you and we don't want anybody left out. So make sure if you're graduating from high school or college, make sure you get that information into the church. Also, the Joy Group Breakfast at Strawberry Hill will be going on uh, Saturday, April the 24th. So make sure if you're going on that that you sign up for that. And also, if you will be riding on the van, you'll need to wear a mask. So just make sure that you sign up for those things. At this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father God, Lord, we just thank you so much for everything that you do for us. Lord, we thank you for bringing us through another week, Lord, and just for taking care of us and watching over us. And, and Lord, blessing us beyond so much more than what we deserve, God. But, Lord, you're always so good to us. And, and Lord, we're undeserving, but, Lord, you love us anyway. Lord, we pray for this service today. Lord, just pray you'd be with Walford, give him the words we need to hear, Lord, that would draw us closer to you. And, Father, we just pray that, that everything that's said and done today will be pleasing to you. And, Lord, if there be one here today who doesn't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, Lord, and we just pray that today would be their day of salvation. Lord, we thank you, we love you. Forgive us where we fail you. In Christ's name, amen. A little nervous, so just bear with me. Um, we lost my mother two years ago uh, in a car accident, <coughs> and I, I felt in, I fell into a deep depression. I, I dealt with a lot of anger. I was angry towards God because I didn't understand. Um, 
looked at this song here, it really helped me to come out of that dark place. And even though sometimes we don't understand why he does what he does, he will always rescue us in our storm. There is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be your shelter. I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night is true. to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight is true I will rescue you I hear the whispers underneath your breath I hear you whisper you have nothing I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night is true. I will rescue you. I will never stop marching to reach you. Thank you, Amber. That is one powerful song, I'm going to tell you right now. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Let's stand, let's sing it out, y'all.
good morning. I did something kind of dumb one morning this week. I overslept. I slept very late, not just like little overslept, like a whole hour overslept. And I got up with just a few minutes to get ready before I had to leave to go to work. Well, the problem with that is I have very wild hair. And when I wake up, my hair is all catawampus and sticking up and out in every which way you cannot imagine. And so it takes more than a few minutes to do something with this, to get it tamed and under control. Miss Molly and I were talking about that a little bit in Sunday school this morning. So first, what I have to do is use this thing right here. This is shampoo, because it has to be clean to start with. And then I have to use this thing here, which is conditioner, very good conditioner, to make it soft. Because if it ain't soft, I can't do a thing with it. It's like wire. My mama said my hair is like horse hair. So then, after I get it all clean and soft, I have a very special hairbrush and a very special hair dryer that I use to try to get it under control. And sometimes that works. But of course, the day that I woke up late, it did not work. And I had to bring out the big gun. This is a flat iron. And it, you know how you iron your clothes and get wrinkles out? Well, that's basically what this does for your hair. Yeah, right, it's my hair. And ooh. so then, when I did all of this process and finally got it under control and just a little bit tamed, I spray it with hairspray to hold it right there because I want it to stay under control all day. So you can imagine this is quite the process, which is why it is a problem when I oversleep. But you know what? My hair is not the only thing that I have to tame. In fact, I have something else that I have to tame. And it's even harder to tame than my hair. You know what that is? It's my mouth. It's my mouth. My mouth I have to tame. And I don't really mean the way it looks. I'm talking about the words that come out of my mouth. And I'll tell you what, I have to work harder to tame that than I do at taming this. So I have this whole toolbox here of tools that I can use to tame my hair, but what on earth can I use to tame my mouth? What do you think? Um, a toothbrush? A toothbrush? <laughs> that might work if I just carried it around all day. Maybe that might work. That's pretty good. That might work. I'll tell you what I have to do to tame my mouth because I can't do it by myself. I have to ask God to help me. I have to because it takes God's help to get this mouth under control. You know, a tame mouth actually is not that much different than tame hair. We want the words that we speak to be clean and soft and under control, just like my hair. You know, a tame mouth, it speaks the truth, and it's gentle and kind and uplifting and encouraging to people. Oh, but an untamed mouth. When my mouth gets wild, sometimes it's not as kind. It's not. It might be kind of gripey and grumpy and grumbly, or it might even say something that's not true. That's what happens when you have an untamed mouth. So I have all these tools to help me tame my hair, but I have the best tool of all to help me tame my mouth. And in Psalm 141.3, there's a prayer that I like to pray. And you know, I can't just fix my hair one time and it be done. I wish. I wish, but that is not the case. I have to keep fixing it and keep taming it and this is the same with this prayer I have to keep saying it so here's the prayer it says Psalm 141 3 in case you need to know it Lord help me control my tongue help me be careful about what I say that is a wonderful prayer to tame your mouth so just in case there's anybody here this morning that their mouth's a little wild we're gonna pray about that right now let's pray Father God, thank you that you help us to do things and to say things that are pleasing to you. God, we ask you today to please help us control our tongues. Help us to be careful about what we say so that all we say and do might be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Great message there. Uh, as you look at your prayer list, there's so many needs and concerns. We're going to add some names to the list, too. Uh, but uh, Larry Marinucci has been going through kidney dialysis. But uh, while doing that, uh, I believe yesterday, some, huh? uh, Lori Marinucci, uh, who did I say? Okay, somebody, uh, no, Lori uh, Marinucci, I uh, want to remember her. She's been going through Dallas, but we're going through Dallas just yesterday. She started building up some fluid, and so she's in the hospital at Mary Black Campus, they call it now, so do remember her in prayer. Robin Childers has been put under hospice care. She is at home, but needing us to be lifting her up in prayer in a special way. And then uh, also we want to remember the Ben Atkins family. This is Adam Ellison's uh, uh, cousin and all this they were in a car accident last night now the tragedy of all this is two of the children are in the hospital in Greenville and then the two other children and the mom is in a hospital at Spartanburg and the family and the, and the uh, Ben was injured pretty good and should be in the hospital himself but he didn't want his two children over in Greenville being by themselves and so he's injured and really needs some uh, care, but he's taking care of his family. So do remember that Ben Atkins family is in this car accident. And also want to remember Dalton Joy as he, he's uh, got a fractured tibia, right? A fractured tibia and going to be seeing the orthopedic specialist very soon. Want to remember him. Uh, Bella Litcha, I understand she's fractured her foot. And so she's going to be seeing the doctor for that. And then also just a praise from last week, having Vetti Crocker. Uh, Vetti Crocker joined our church family, and we're sure are glad that she's a part of it. And so we rejoice in that. Also a special need, Buddy Fowler. Uh, Jim and Jane Fagan asked that we remember him in prayer. Buddy Fowler, he's in his mid-70s. He has been discovered to have three different kinds of cancer. Three different kinds of cancer. That's a prayer need. But the biggest prayer need is he does not know Jesus as his Lord and Savior. He needs salvation. He needs to be saved. And so do lift him up in prayer. Buddy Fowler, that he, he come to know the Lord. We pray for healing. But you know the greatest thing of all is knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? Yeah. And that's what we're going to be praying for. And I, I think uh, Stephen Ellis is supposed to have been the deacon uh, of the day. But he's not. Ron, you taking his place. So if you make your way on up here. So as Ron comes, any unspoken request, just raise your hand. Look at this. Look at this. So many needs. But we have a mighty God that's going to answer in his perfect way. And so we keep trusting in him. Brother? Good morning. Good to see some smiling faces, but it would be better if I saw all smiling faces. Isn't it good to be in the house of God today? And uh, sitting here like it's our last days is, is not what God wants when we're in his house. He wants us to smile and to come to worship and praise him. I was just thinking this week about Prince uh, Philip, 99 years old, passed away. And I read an article here a while back about Prince George, which is uh, Kate and Harry's child, being born into uh, the royal family and all the money that he'll inherit when he, he's third in line for the throne, but then there's another baby since then. But anyhow, I thought about, you know, we as Christians, when we're saved, and that's Jesus to come into our hearts. We're born into a royal family too. Amen. Praise God. We, we're just as important uh, as any person in royal families in England uh, as, as can be. But it's just a wonderful thing to know that, that God saved us and, and put us in his family, his royal family. We're the children of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful day that you've given us, Father. We thank you for all the blooming flowers and birds singing and those things coming to life around us. Lord, we just thank you for the life that you gave us, the new life in Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you and we thank you, Jesus, this morning for going to the cross to save us from our sins. Lord, you do so much for us every day. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Most of all, Father, we thank you for your love, that you loved us first, Father, and brought us into the royal family of God. 
Lord, we lift up these that have been, been mentioned this morning that are sick, and some of them so sick, we just pray, dear God, that you would suit a blessing of healing to each and every one. Lord, we know that we many of us have walked down that road, and we know how comforting it is to know that people are praying for you, and I just pray, dear God, for all of them, that they'd know, Father, and feel the prayers that Southside is sending to them. Lord, we thank you for our church this morning. We thank you for every member here this morning and every visitor. We just pray, dear God, that we come to worship you, to listen to your word expounded to us, Father, and that it would all cause us to be better Christians, Lord, and to serve you in a better way. Father, we pray that uh, you'd be with Brother Walford as he brings the bread of life to us. We pray that he'll have the strength and the unction from on high to preach your gospel. Lord, again, we thank you for all you do for us. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. Wow, what a message. Are you ready to go? Are you excited about going to be with Jesus? Folks, it's going to be here in no time. Blink of an eye. Ask some of us old folks. I mean, I ask us. Time goes by just like that, right? But we keep fighting. We want to live 
well, like that, that prince, 99 years of age, right? 99 years of age. Well, I want to live a long time. Then we get to heaven and say, man, I could have been here 40 years earlier. Think about that. Look in your scripture, John 3, 16 and 17. Most of you are going to quote it, right? Because you don't have your Bible, so I guess you're going to quote it to me. Wouldn't it be something I, I just randomly pick up somebody and say, y'all quote that scripture right now. See, some of you would be scared to death, wouldn't you? But talking about being scared, think about this. Are you saved? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? That if this very moment that heart stopped, where would you be? Where would you be? Well, I'll tell you what, your body be here, right? But where would your soul be for eternity? Are you ready? So the word saved, the word saved comes from the Greek word sozo. Sozo. And it has actually three meanings. As you see, it means to save. That means to save. It also means to keep safe and sound. And then it means to rescue from danger or destruction. I like that word saved, right? That is going to save us. It is saving us and it will save us. That's what we can be having just rejoicing. But I want to ask you something. Why do you need to be saved? Why do we as people on this earth need to be saved? Hmm? Y'all remember that scripture, Romans 3, 23? How does that start out? For all have sinned and do what? Come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned. For all have sinned. Uh, now, I'm not going to ask y'all to look at your neighbor and say, you're a sinner. Because, see, you're the sinner also. We're all sin. That's why we need to be saved. To be saved. Let's stand and honor God's word. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him, through Jesus, only Jesus. Nobody else is needed. It's just Jesus trusting him today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for those folks that's in this place that's under conviction. And Lord, they know they need to be saved, but they keep waiting. They keep waiting. They keep waiting. And Lord, let them realize that time may be gone one day, and it's too late. I pray for that one that has been saved, but Satan has just whooped up on them, and, and they're always doubting their salvation. They're always questioning, am I really saved? And Lord, the fear that's among us today. Are we living a life that glorifies you? Lord, we're always wanting to protect ourselves and protect our, you know, what we have when we need to be just giving up everything, giving our life to you completely. And then what you do, you bless us back. Lord, let us realize today, today is a day of just turning everything over to you. Guide us through this message. Lord, let it, your word be lifted up. Let you be glorified in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Be seated. So if we die in our sins, where will you spend eternity? If we die in our sin, where are we going to spend eternity? It's a place called hell. H-E-L-L. -L. I mean, y'all. some of you older folks, y'all remember if y'all used the word hell just said the word hell, some of your family said, don't you say that around here. Oh, that was the awfulest word that could ever be said. Now we just laugh at it. Well, you're just going to hell. And we laugh. We laugh. How tragic that is. But why is there a hell? Hell is the great separator. The great separator. Um, think about this. Uh, got some potatoes from the grocery store. Have you ever got one and, and that bag looked uh, pretty decent until you started opening it up and in the middle of that bag of potatoes was a rotten potato? 
And that rotten potato had messed up about all of them, right? Folks, can you imagine being in heaven and there's somebody that deserves to be in hell being in heaven? See, great separator. Here's heaven for those who trust Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And here's hell. It's a separation. It is a separation. I'm glad it is a separation. That's the folks who never trusted Jesus. Who never trusted Jesus. No one in their right mind, no one in their right mind wants to go to hell, right? It's ever burning. It's darkness. It's separation. Now, tell me, I want to go. I want to go. No, I don't think so. Nobody in their right mind wants to go there, but what most lost people think is, I've got just enough time to get saved, right? I got just enough time. I'm going to run right up to it and say, no, I'm going to heaven. Who says that's going to happen to you? Who thinks that we got all this time in the world? And so, are you thinking right now, I got enough time to get saved? Later on, I got to party a little bit. What's that old saying the young people used to? Now, that was the old young people. Well, I got to sow my wild oats. That's an old terminology. But how many of us, no matter what age, are waiting to a certain time, and then I'm going to get my life straight? You're not guaranteed that, are you? Right. See, another game that Satan loves to play in our head is, I mean, there's actually some people that think there's not a hell. Or here's another thing. They think there is a hell, but it's a temporary timeout. I picked up uh, Leah from school the other day, and the teacher walks out and said, Leah got kicked while on the playground the, the day, and she, she cried a little. Leah don't cry. She just gets mad. <laughs> and I, I, I turned to her first. I said, did you hit the kid back? And the teacher said, no, but we put him in time out. Folks, hell is not a time out. Hell is forever and ever and ever. Never, never will we have a chance to change our way. So think about this. Um, Satan also plays a mind game in believers of getting you to doubt. Am I really saved? Have you ever questioned that? You did something, you messed up, and you kind of start saying, am I really saved? And see, he can't take our salvation but he can sure take our witness away. He can take our joy. I mean, I love that verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. That means to bring us joy, to bring us laughter, to bring us fulfillment. I mean, all the good things. But what we want to do, we're going to question and doubt. And then what happens? We don't witness as we should. But we're going to look at three reasons. Three reasons why we can know that God can really save our soul. And the first thing is God's promise to save. God's promise to save. How wonderful that is. And if we can say this, it is an old one. It's an old promise. Look, Adam and Eve. Y'all remember those dudes? I mean, they messed up bad. Why didn't God just say, that's it? You're out, not just out of the garden. He could have said, you're out of life. You're gone. I'm going to start all over again. Now, they got tossed out of the garden because they were disobedient. But guess what? God saved them. And look through the scripture. You know, what is it? Noah and his family, they were saved. Now, all those people that were killed, yes, because they did not listen to God. Death does come, but God still saves. It's an old one. You see example after example. And then we see it is an ongoing promise. It's an ongoing promise there. Uh, and so we see that in John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. He doesn't need to keep doing it. One time, that was it, right? That whoever believes in him shall not perish. So we have this. Uh, it will never lose its power. Never lose its power. 
God is a saving God, and nothing will ever, ever change that. Praise God for that. Have y'all ever studied any other cults and these other denominations? I mean, they're not even a denomination. They're just cults. And these folks and, and all this, they have fickle gods. Many of them, is, they hope they can get to a God, their God, on a good day. Aren't you glad that we have a God that's good all the time? His mercy and His grace. And so it's an ongoing one. And we also see it's an open one. It's an open promise. It's open to everyone who is a sinner. So that's you and that's me. It's open to all of us. It uh, does not matter the color of our skin. I mean, that's the craziest thing. You can go to another country. And guess what? God saves them too. Yes, amen. Other countries come to us. Guess what? God saves them. It doesn't matter a color. It doesn't matter uh, what country we're from. It doesn't matter if we're poor or rich. Thank goodness for that. It's open to all who have open ears and open hearts. Open ears and open hearts. That's what it's, it's all about. It's open for us. But we also see God's power to save. God's power to save. Uh, I know a lot of people, a lot of organizations, a lot of companies that have promised a lot. During COVID-19, have y'all, are y'all tired of seeing those commercials of all that exercise equipment? Y'all know what I'm talking about? I, one particular company, they got some of the fanciest equipment it could ever be. I mean, they got that bicycle, you can ride that thing on, you can lean that thing right and forth, and the screen, and all that kind of stuff. And Do you know that company had gotten into a lot of trouble? Because the COVID-19 and all the restrictions, and I mean, folks, we've been blessed in this state. There are some states that just recently opened up their gyms. So all these folks wanted exercise equipment, all this, and they started ordering. They could not deliver. They could not make it fast enough. And they went through some financial trouble because of that. Because they could not fulfill their promise. Aren't you glad we have a God that fulfills his promise? And so we see that God's power to save. So what power does God have? First we see the power to call the sinner. To call the sinner. I know there's some children out there that are trying to understand. They said, you mean God's got a cell phone? God's got something better than a cell phone. <laughs> he, he speaks in his beautiful voice, and we can hear, and we don't, have to, we don't have to be next to a cell tower. Thank goodness for that. But the power to save because the call to the sinner. We don't get saved when we feel like it. Did y'all know that? It's not like, and see, that's what gets me. There's some people that think that later on in life, oh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get saved now. If God's calling you now, you better answer now. You better answer now. You see, the only way we can be saved is God calls us. And you say, what is that? Well, have you ever heard of a conscience? Have you ever heard of a gut feeling? Have you ever heard the Holy Spirit working in your life in such a way? That is God calling. And you better answer then. The better answer then. That's why children that come forward say, I want to get baptized. I said, you want to get baptized. Don't you know before you get baptized, you need to admit that you're a sinner? And some children say, well, I'm a sinner. I hit my brother, my sister. <laughs> you know, they know that. But a lot of them say, no, I just want to be baptized because my friend got baptized. That's not the way it goes. We need to recognize our sin and confess our sin. But it starts with the Holy Spirit working in our lives. God's call upon us. And so we see this. That is why we need to respond when God calls us. Did y'all know God is never obligated to call you again? Praise God he does. Praise God he's called you time after time after time. But there is that chance. He may say, that's enough. I've drawn the line. Do you want to take that chance? Do you want to take that chance? Don't assume you're going to hear from God again. That scripture, Proverbs 29, verse 1, listen to that. Whoever remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. 
Have you been stiff-necked? Have you, God's calling you and you keep putting it off. You keep waiting. You think another time's coming. What happens? After many rebukes, suddenly be destroyed. But we also see that God has the power to convert the sinner, to change the sinner. That's the wonderful thing there. He, can ch- he calls us, he loves us, but he can change us. Think about these things. They're not on the PowerPoint or in your notes, but listen to a few of these things. Uh, to convert the sinner, guess what God's going to do in your life? One is he's going to forgive all your sins. Did you hear that? All of your sins. I like that. Have you ever gone to get a car fixed or a lawnmower fixed or something like this? And they come out and say, well, we got most of the trouble taken care of. Most of the trouble? I paid you money to get it all done. See, when God heals us, when God forgives us, when God gives us new life, he does it completely. And then we see we become a child of God. And that simply means he's in control. He's in control. We're delivered from sin. We're delivered from the power of sin, from the presence of sin, and from the penalty of sin. I like that. I mean the power and the presence and the penalty of sin. We're delivered from it. We're lifted out of it. Never they have to worry about it again. And then so we become a joint heir with Jesus. We talked about that Wednesday night in the Bible study. That we, we are joint heirs. And here's the thing about it. When we're joint heirs with Jesus, guess what? Whatever Jesus is promised, we're promised. Did y'all know that? We're not like the ugly stepchild. And there's never an ugly stepchild. But y'all know what I'm talking about, the Cinderella concept. We're, you know, oh, I can't. When God adopts us, he treats us just like his son. Then we're joint heirs. And then we inherit a heavenly home. We inherit a heavenly home, and that's a beautiful thing. And some of you people in here know what I'm about to say this. Isn't it great to know that we've got a heavenly home that we don't have to worry about upkeep? How many of you got your promised house i mean i mean the wonderful the house you've been looking for your dream home and five years later you're still working on it only to start over again when we inherit that mansion in heaven no upkeep man that's something to rejoice in and then we become a saint and not just a limestone saint but a saint in heaven what a time to rejoice in that and so here's the best one the, the power that Lord has is the power to conserve the saint. To conserve the saint. John 10, 28 says this, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. No one. This past Monday, I was working in a little building out in the back uh, I'm, I'm trying to convert it over so I can put a lounge chair and a TV there so I can get out of the house more. But anyway, uh, but it's my little workhouse uh, building, excuse me, and, uh, and all this. But I needed to glue something, two pieces of metal. I could not find anything that really is supposed to work. But I looked on the shelf, and there was this little tube of glue. I won't tell you the brand name, but it had a gorilla's name, uh, picture on the front. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Well, I got it out and tried to squirt it, and it will not come out for nothing. I mean, I opened it up. I had to get, uh, I got uh, an old bolt, and I stuck it down in it and broke it. And there was actually some glue in the middle of that hardened glue. And it was just enough. So I got the bolt out, and I put it in there between the metal, and I put it all, and, and all and that rest of it. I just threw it away because it was so hard. I didn't pay much attention. About 30 minutes later, I looked. You wouldn't believe how much glue was on my hands. It's still there in some places. I mean, that was Monday, and I'm still cleaning up this monkey glue. Guess what? When God gets a hold of you, he will never let you go. Isn't that great to know? He will never let you go. So let's look now at God's provision to save. 
God's provision to save. The first thing we see is he provided a perfect substitute. A perfect substitute. I know many of you watch sports, and we've just come through the NCAA finals and all that kind of stuff, and how many of these uh, games, it was that substitute that came off the bench that made the difference. It was the one that had been sitting there, but the last moment they needed somebody to come in. But I want you to think about this. Uh, I still can't believe Jesus is a substitute, right? Now, he's a substitute He's a substitute for those sacrifices they had to do in the Old Testament. But he's the real thing, right? He's the real thing. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. God made this perfect, this perfect Savior to take on our sins, not just what we have done, but what we're doing now, and guess what? Even what we will do, for we're not perfect, are we? And so we see that the perfect substitute, we also see that he provided a perfect sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice. You know, a little knowledge is dangerous. A lot of religion can be trouble, but one drop of blood is perfect. One drop of blood that Jesus shed. But we know he, he poured blood that we could be saved today. And then we see a perfect plan. It's a perfect plan. It was a plan of salvation. Okay, I know they'd made an a updated movie of it not too long ago, and it really bombed. It was bad and all this. But any of y'all remember the old TV show, The Eighteen? Some of y'all will not admit it, but you liked it. <laughs> y'all remember at the end of their adventures, I believe his name was Hannibal. He was a leader. He pulled out a cigar, lighted up. And what was the words he would say? I love when a plan comes together. I love it when a plan comes together. Now, if you go back and look at that show, uh, it was not much of a plan. They just kind of threw everything together and it fell in place. But I want you to realize this. God had a perfect plan. A perfect plan. He loved you. God loved you so much that he sent his son, Jesus. So God had a plan. He did his part. Jesus has a plan. He did his part on the cross. The Holy Spirit has a plan. That is to confront you to beat up on you sometimes, but to get your attention. Holy Spirit did his part. Guess what? The plan is never complete until you do your part. That's it. It's a perfect plan that a holy God, an almighty God, leaves into, puts it in our lap. That's the weirdest thing, isn't it? Why does a holy, perfect, righteous God turn it over to us? Because He loves you so much. He wants you, to, he wants you to change your life. He wants you to change your ways. He wants you to get things straight in your life. But He wants you to take that first step. He's there. He's got everything to help you, to strengthen you, to encourage you. But you've got to turn it over to him. Would you bow your heads at this time? I want you to think right now. Have you turned everything over to the Lord? Have you turned over everything to the Lord? I mean, every closet of your life, every back room of your life, all your wishes, all your desires, have you turned it over to Him? I pray that you have. And you're going to have time during this invitation to respond. To those who are watching online, you can respond. Just text me, 812-0073, and let me know of your decision. But this is the time. This is the time. You're not promised tomorrow. 
You're not promised when you get 40, when you get 60, when you get 80, then you're going to get things straight. This is a day. This is a day that God is working in your life. Respond to him. He just loves you. He's not twisting your arm. He's not picking you up by the back of the neck. He simply said, I love you so much. I gave my son for you.